Hebrew Matthew has, Ashrei rodfei shalom, shebnei Elohim yikareu. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the pursuers of peace, for they mm-hmm. will be called b'nei Elohim, the sons of God. My goodness. That sounds like a little no, bit of a difference. No, I don't know that it's that big of a difference. In other words, in, in Greek you say uh, to make peace. In Hebrew you say to pursue peace. Mm-hmm. Dalich, who we know translated from the Greek into the Hebrew, mm-hmm. he translates ashrei rodfei shalom, verbatim the same mm-hmm. so far. Blessed are those who pursue peace. Ki b'nei Elohim lahem, for it shall be called to them the sons of Elohim. So mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. has the tenses a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, or the, the passive and the active voice. But basically, um, it's almost identical. Mm-hmm. Uh, both, um, uh, let's say if let's say if Matthew represents accurately what Yeshua said, then he got that phrase from Psalm thirty four fifteen, mm-hmm. which says Bakesh shalom v'rodfehu, mm-hmm. seek peace and pursue it. Amen. And uh, Dalich definitely got it, that phrase from Psalm 34, 15. In other words, he saw the phrase, Ereno Poyo, uh, those who make peace. And he said, oh, Ereno Poyo is, um, is in Hebrew to pursue peace. Mm-hmm. And um, in other words, it's, it's a Hebrew idiom that he's translating back out of the Greek. And if we look, let's see it, Psalm 34, 15, um, and we see... Uh, uh, seek peace and chase after it. Mm-hmm. And let's see what we have in the Greek. Um, I didn't even look this up beforehand. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so it doesn't have that exact. It's interesting. It doesn't have and make peace. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have to ask how did he end up with this phrase? He didn't end up with it based on the Greek. Mm-hmm. He said, What is a Hebrew idiom for making peace? Mm-hmm. Now, is there a difference between pursuing peace and making peace? I believe there is. And and I'll tell you something, for me, this was a change because when I saw to pursue peace, the pressure kind of uh, went down a little bit. Um, I don't Mm. always feel like, I'll be completely honest, Nehemia, I don't always feel like being a peacemaker. Uh, Mm. Pursuing peace seems to be something that I'm pointing towards, I'm trying to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm, it's like lies with me. Peacemaker feels like it's just you. That's that's how it feels to me. And you could interpret it that. In other words, someone who pursues peace, if the other side doesn't reciprocate, okay, I tried. Exactly. Whereas if based on the Greek, you could say, and I don't know that it has to be read this way, but it sounds, I guess, in the Greek that you only get credit if you actually make the peace. <laughs> exactly. And, and boy, how can we talk about this without talking about the peace process oh in goodness. Israel? There was a man named Yossi Balin, and he was this uh, professor, a uh, brilliant professor from a university in Israel, and he came up with the doctrine of the peace process. And, the, and he said something like this, and, I, and this ties in, it's related. Oh. He said something like this. Look, we've ha- we, made, we made peace with Egypt. We know what the Arabs need to make peace. Let's cut through all the games. Let's cut through all the negotiations and go just to the final stage, which is what we know they're going to eventually agree to. And one of those things was there has to be an Arab capital in Jerusalem Mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other things. I won't go into the detail. Mm -hmm. And um, people liken this to, and and I'll try to use sensitive language here, right? Imagine if you, you, uh, um, uh, back when your single days, you met this woman and you said to the woman, look, I know in the end we're going to be married. So let's cut to the chase and we don't need dinner. We don't need to go on dates. Let's just get married right now, and tonight we will consummate. Well, she'd probably slap you, Mm -hmm. Um, and she should slap you, (laughs) because there is a process that you need to go through. Mm -hmm. You need to pursue peace in order to make peace. That's big. And Balinism said, this uh, philosophy of Yossi Balin said, oh, no, let's just make peace now. We know know how this is going to end. Let's make peace. And it was a disaster. It brought death of tens of thousands of Jews and tens of thousands of Arabs, especially Muslims. And why did it bring death? Uh, because that's not how things work. There's a dynamic you have to work through. Now here's, now here's the controversy, here's the rub before we get yeah. to the second part of the verse. So what does pursuing peace look like for a person who wants to follow? Okay, so uh, first of all, you have this. to want peace. Now the peacemaker also wants peace, but he's not willing to go through the hard work of ma- making peace. Mm-hmm. And he's not willing to accept no. Sometimes the answer is no, I don't want peace. <laughs> Look, this appears in the Torah. <laughs> Talk to me. This appears in the Torah. In, um, uh, it's in Deuteronomy. And it talks about when you go out to war against uh, a nation, 
Yes. It's ki teitze la milchama, if I'm not mistaken. And when you go out to war, here, it's Deuteronomy 20, mm-hmm. uh, verse 10. When you approach a city to re- wage war against it, and you call out to it, shalom, peace. Peace. It shall come to pass if they answer you peace and they open up uh, the gates to you and all the people are in it shall be, um, uh, and this is when it's in the land of Israel, shall be tributaries to you and they shall serve you, right? So there's an opportunity for peace and they can respond with peace. Now here it's when it's in the land of Israel. It's not some far off land. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the land that God has given you. If they want to live with you in, in peace and be subject to your government, they can live in peace. If they refuse to live as subjects of, um, in this case, a Democrat, the only democratic state in the Middle East, and they want to destroy you, then you can't make peace with them. The answer sometimes is no. I, so, I mean, so, 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 so look, I've, I've seen this in all kinds of things in my life. I've seen this with, with governments, with, with geopolitical situations. I've seen this with friendships, and I've seen this, and it's painful. And I've seen this with relationships. Sometimes the answer is no. And pursuing peace is okay, is a good thing, Force trying to force peace when the other side doesn't want to have peace, you can't do it. Wow. It leads to death and destruction on both sides. You read the rest of that whole verse? The, Did you yeah. read that whole verse? Which one? The one on peace. Uh, the, 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 yeah. I mean, okay. we can read the whole passage. There's more to it, but yeah. Okay. Give, us, um, give us the passage. I'm just saying for the, for the, what, what the passage is. And it says, and it shall come to pass if they don't make peace with you and they make war with you, you shall be an enemy against them and Yehovah will give them into your hand and, you'll, and you will smite all of their males and with the sword. Mm-hmm. Etc. All right. I mean, we can go into it and, and read about it, but um, but tell and, us where that is. And it says in verse fifteen, "Thus shall you do with all the." Actually, this is the cities that are far away from yeah. you, that are not from the uh, uh, cities of these nations. Mm-hmm. It's in Deuteronomy twenty, verse. Uh, That's what I need. Verse ten. Excellent. Um, okay, so if you're dealing with a nation who um, doesn't want to have peace then you can't make peace. Now, in this case, we weren't trying to rule over them. We said, you guys, look, that's our land, the the West Bank and Gaza. Hebron is the heartland of the people of Israel. It's where Abraham lived. It's where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried. Mm -hmm. My ancestors are buried there. You want to rule over their graves because you guys came and and took that from us. Mm -hmm. We're willing to stipulate to that if if you make peace with us. And they wouldn't do it. They refused to do it. This culminated in the year 2000 in what was called the Camp David Accords, the second mm-hmm. Camp David Accords. Mm-hmm. Ehud Barak, who was the Israeli prime minister, went to, um, went to this place, Camp David, in the United States and met with Yasser Arafat. And he was willing to give them every inch of the West Bank and Gaza with the exception of certain population centers in the West Bank. He said, we'll give you other territory in, in place of that because we already you know, 50,000, 100,000 people living there. We can't afford to move those people. Yeah. Are you thinking about like places like Ma'ale Adumim? Ma'ale Adumim. Yes. Ma'ale Adumim and Ariel were the two uh, yeah. um, things that helped. You know where I got my Torah scroll, right? Ma'ale Adumim. You got it in Ma'ale Adumim. For the Torah <laughs> shall go forth out of Jerusalem, and in this case, via Ma'ale Adumim. Yeah, man. So um, he said, we'll give you, uh, we'll, we'll oh, compensate man. you for that 4% of the land. 4% of the land. Um, kind of like, you know, we had this thing with Mexico, the Gadsden Purchase, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to make a deal. Let's make a deal. And we'll give you land in the, in the Negev in place of that. And so you'll have a larger area around Gaza. And the prime minister of Malaysia asked, um, it was Malaysia or Indonesia, I don't remember. He asked Arafat later, why did you turn down that deal? You'll never get such a good deal again. He said, it may take us 100 years, but we're going to drive every last Jew into the sea. We're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And if I make peace now... Later generations of Palestinians who are living in peace with the Jews will never forgive me for not wiping them out, even if it takes 100 years. So you can pursue peace, but if the other side doesn't want peace, you can't make it. 